What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add an owner to our venues and why that's important for our app with Django and Python. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add an owner to each venue. So each venue will have an owner who owns the venue, who has set it up in the system. And why is that important? Well, we've got all these venues here and we can update them. And as it is now, anybody can update or delete them. And we don't necessarily want that. We only want the person that uploaded the venue, the, only, the person that added the venue, the person that owns the venue to be able to update it or delete it. So in order to do that, we have to determine who owns the venue. And we didn't set that up that way when we first started this. So let's head over to our code using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django series. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. Okay, so if we head over to our events directory and let's look at our models.py file. And here we have the model for our venue. And you can see we've got name, address, zip code, phone, web, and email. We have no owner. If we look down at event, we have a manager. That's basically an owner. And that makes sense. But we didn't do that for venue. Don't know why, but we didn't. So in this video, we're going to start to add that. And then in the next video, we're probably going to tie it together and make it to where we can only edit if the person who is editing is the owner. And otherwise, you know, you won't be able to edit or delete it. So it should be pretty easy, but there's a couple of little twists and turns in here that are actually kind of interesting. So it should be a good video. So right off the bat, I'm just going to add an owner, right? Now this is going to be models dot what? Well, we've got URL field, we've got email field, we've got car field. This is going to be an integer field. So integer field. Field. And now why integer field? Because our users have IDs, ID numbers, primary keys, unique ID numbers that we can associate with them. So when somebody adds a venue, we're going to say, hey, whatever that person's ID is, that's who the owner is. That way we can tie it to the user, we can tie it to events, we can tie it to everything because everything sort of interacts with that ID. So an ID is a number, one, two, three, four, five, 962, and numbers are integers. Well, whole numbers are integers. So we're gonna use an integer field. So, okay. And if we want, we can put, you know, venue owner, but we really don't need to because we're not actually gonna use this on any form, as you'll see in a minute. This is all gonna be sort of behind the scenes doing its thing to make sure the right owner is doing the right thing. So we don't really need a label here, but whatever, I'll just put it in. And now normally we put max length and integer fields don't need a max length because it's a number. So they just, they do away with that. But we do need, let's say blank equals false. We don't want this to ever be blank because we want to associate all of our all of our venues with some person. Now we've got a problem. If we look back at our app, we've already got a bunch of venues and those haven't been assigned an owner yet. So what do we do with all those venues that haven't been assigned an owner? Well, you could go through and delete them all and re-add them later, or we can just come through here and set a default equal to some number. So I'm going to say one. Now let's head back over here and let's look at our users real quick. Let's go to the admin section. Look at our users. So our admin is user one. We can see right here, right? One. If we look through here, Tim, on the other hand, he's user three. So for the default, I'm going to set it to one because that's the admin. So I'm just going to assume the admin added all these venues, right? So that's fine for us. But in the real world, you might not want to do that because you might have an app already that has people that have added venues. So if that's the case, you get a little bit of a problem, but this is just, we're learning. So we can set the default to one. This will add a one, the user will be user number one to all of those other venues. It will not add one in the future, right? This is just for the stuff that's already there. In the future, we're going to add whoever the specific user's ID is as the owner, and it won't use this one. But for now, we need to add that. So, okay, that looks good. And that's really all we need to do here. So we've made a major change to the model. Now we need to make a migration and push that migration. So let's head over to the terminal and do that real quick. Control C to break out of our server. Let me clear the screen. And I'm in my C my club slash my club website directory. As always, my virtual environment is turned on as always. And let's run Python manage.py make migrations. And this is plural, even though this is one migration, that's just how it works. And you can see it's added a field owner to venue. So, okay, we've made our migration. It's always a two-step process. Then you push the migration. So to push it, we go Python manage.py migrate. And we've done this in the past, I believe many times. So, okay, that looks good. So now we can come back over here. Let's actually run our server again. And let's head back over here and let's go to the admin section and check and see if there's been any change. So we can look at our venues. 
and we can pick one. And we can see now, hey, venue owner, one. Well, I guess we did need a label there. So it shows up in the admin area <laughs> with that label. Remember, I was uh, goofing around right here and said we probably don't need that. Uh, I guess we do need that. So anyway, we can see, good, Area 41's venue owner is one. Very cool. So now, what do we do now? Well, let's go back here and let's say we want to add a new venue. So let's go to add venue. And you can see we've got this set up here and we've got a form, but there's no field for venue owner. And think about it, we probably don't want one. We don't want anybody to just be able to type in a number and say, oh yeah, my user ID is 42. Well, you don't know what your user ID is. I don't remember what my user IDs are and you shouldn't have to, right? We wanna add this automatically. And also if I'm user one, I don't want the user, user one, to be able to type in 27 or something. We don't wanna be able to allow people to assign venues to other people, only to themselves. So we don't want a field here that allows anything like that. So there are several different ways you could do it. You can make a hidden field and sort of slap in the user ID, or we could do this on the back end. So we know at any given time who the user ID is because we're logged in. So if I copy this and then log out and then try and go back to this page, it won't even let me. So you can't even get to that page unless you're logged in, right? So we know only people that are logged in are gonna be on this page. So therefore only people with user IDs are gonna be able to be on this page. And we can sort of see if we wanted to what the user ID is. We can go to templates and events and let's go to, let's see what, add venue. And then up here at the top, we could just put a little tag in that says user.id. And right here, I might say ID. If we save this, come back over here and hit reload, we see at ID is one. And if I log out, log back in as somebody else, say Tim, and then come back here, add venue A, ID is three. So at any given time, we know what that ID is. So we can reference it in our code. So let me go ahead and take that off because we don't actually need that but we can reference this user.id on the back end by passing in the request. So if we go to our views.py file and let's find the add venue function, there it is, add venue, you'll notice we pass in this request. That comes from the browser, that holds all that user info. So we can access that user info in our code here. So right here is where we're saving the form that somebody filled out. We can tack on the ID to our form before we save it right here. So I'm gonna comment this out. So I'm gonna create a new variable called venue, and I'm gonna set that equal to our form.save, but I wanna set the commit to false. I'm saying, hey, we're gonna save this, but don't save it yet, right? We're gonna save it in just a minute. Instead, let's tack on that ID. So let's go venue.owner, and why .owner? Because in our models.py file, we called this field owner. So we're saying, hey, add this to that field, right? So venue.owner equals, and remember I said we passed in this request, we can access it, request.user.id, which is what we had on this page right here when I had this, you know, user.id, right? So we're just pulling that from the request, which gets sent with Django and all the good things. And um, yeah, that's all, that's really all there is to it. This is the, we know this is the logged in user, user.id because they can't be on that page if they're not logged in. So that seems good. And now finally, we just go venue.save. Just like we did form.save before, we've sort of changed it. You know, we put form.save, we assigned it to this. We said, hey, don't save it quite yet. We want to tack on something. What do we want to tack on? User request, uh, request.userid. Now we go ahead and save it. So that should be it. That really is all there is to it. Let's go ahead and save this and give it a try and see if that worked. Remember, we are now logged in as Tim, who is number three. But before we do that, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, end of commercial. So if I reload this, let's create a venue. So Tim's place. 111 Tim Street, uh, 89137, phone 111 222 web address tim.com, and it's tim at tim.com. So we're gonna add a new venue, click submit. Your venue was submitted successfully, woohoo. Now let's go back here and see. We probably have to go to the last here. Yep, there it is, Tim's place. 
and it looks okay, but it hasn't been assigned three. Now we got to go back in here and check for that. So let's go to our admin section, log in as admin, go to our venues, find Tim's place, and boom, the venue owner is in fact number three, which we know is Tim. We can come back here to our users if we wanted to and see, yep, sure enough, there's right there in the URL three, right? And uh, that's all there's to it. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now we just need to put into place some stuff to determine, hey, are you number three? Are you Tim? If so, you can edit Tim's place. If not, you can't. And we'll start to look at that in the next video. There's some things we need to do for that. It's gonna take a few minutes and we're getting a little low on time in this video. We'll also wanna change the update page as well. So if we just go back here to our venues section, we have this update thing, right? We only want them to be able to update it if they're the correct user as well. We'll get into that in the next video as well, as well as delete. We don't want the people who don't own this thing to be able to delete it. So we'll fix that in the next video as well. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube button to get $30 off memberships to pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.